Hello. Okay, we can almost stop. The time is up here. About uh, 4 p.m. in China now. I think it's uh, 11 a.m. in Turkey and the US. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. okay. So let's start our webinar. Hello, everyone. How are you? This is Audi from International Sales Department of Wisonic Medical. Welcome you all to attend the 12th Global Webinar of Wisonic Dandelion College. Wisonic Dandelion College is a free online platform for the purpose of sharing and learning the cutting edge know-how and insights of point of care ultrasound applications with global professionals and medical practitioners. Today, we are very honored to invite Dr. Othman from Iraq as our webinar speaker and Dr. Toga from Turkey as our honorary moderator. Now, please allow me to give you a brief introduction of our moderator moderator, uh, to Dr. Toga. Uh, Dr. Toga Ergonench. He is an associate professor of anesthesiology and intensive care working on ultrasound guided interventions and the musculoskeletal sonography. He studied the faculty of medicine at Uludak University, Turkey, and was awarded as medical doctor when he graduated in 2000. In 2006, he joined the Akia University Education and the Research Hospital as a specialist as, at the anesthesia and intensive care department. And in 2007, he founded Korukuk Campus Intensive Care Unit of Sakya University Education and the Research Hospital. He is the founder and head of Akia's Pain Center since 2014. He has been invited to many international pain endeavor workshops and ultrasound guided interventions, and also delivered several lectures on the international conferences. He is also membership of many professional organizations like the Turkish Society of Anesthesiology and Reanimation, European Society of Anesthesiology, European Society of Regional Anesthesia and Therapy, Turkish Multidisciplinary Ultrasound Society. So this is the brief introduction of Dr. Toga. Okay, let's welcome Dr. Toga. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ode. Uh, it's my turn. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, our speaker today, but first uh, I want to share my screen. Okay. Now, do you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Today, our speaker, Dr. Otman, was graduated from College of Medicine at the University of Baghdad in 1999. He has been the fellow of Iraq Board for Medical Specialization since 2006. He worked as a cardiac anesthetist in Erbil Cardiac Center from 2007 to 2020 and become a head of the cardiac analysis department since 2011. He has been the head of the anesthesia and pain unit at the College of Medicine, Pavler Medical University since 2014. Dr. Otman has been the consultant in the Minister of Health of Iraq since 2017. Uh, Dr. Otman was the fellow of the interventional pain management Darida Pain Hospital, India in 2018. He was the fellowship in the minimum invasive spine scope from Max Super Specialist Hospital, Dahrudun, India in 19, uh, 2019. Uh, Dr. Otman attended many international trainings on ultrasound, guided regional anesthesi, and the pain integration in France, Turkey, and uh, Egypt. 
And the turn is your Dr. Atman. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chandra, for this uh, presentation. And uh, good day for everybody. Uh, thank you for Wissonic uh, Company to, uh, uh, for this uh, opportunity to share our experience with the, uh, in this global webinar, the doctors in uh, pain uh, specialty and the anesthesia. I'll go through my slides now. Yes, please. Today we'll talk about the knee joints, regarding uh, problems and solutions. What problems we can get and what solutions we have to solve it. The main topics which we'll talk about in this presentation today is about the anatomy. You know, the anatomy is very important because this is a very complex joint and it has very uh, different structures, various structures. We need to, uh, to know uh, very good uh, about the anatomy to get uh, problems oriented. The knee pain and the examination. After that, we will move to the uh, how to assess such patients when they come to our clinics. They usually claim with pain mainly and how we examine them to get the uh, solution. The ultrasound guided scan is one of the uh, measures that will we do it to uh, get the image for the problem. What problem is there? We have to get uh, an image for this and the best way, what will, be, what will be the best way to get the image? The pathology, what pathologies which could be there and the management, the best solutions and the best ways for the management according to the evidence-based medicine. Functional anatomy, this is the largest complex joint and it has a medial and lateral femoro-tibial and the femoro-patellar joint. It is a very complex joint. You see here, sorry. Anteriorly, there's a tibia over the femur and the posteriorly, we can see clearly, we have the uh, femoro-tibial, uh, lateral and medial surfaces in contact in, in this joint. Factors affect this joint stability are various. The most important is the muscles. We have a lot of muscles uh, playing a role in the stability of this joint. And we have also ligaments, intra-articular or extra-articular. All these play a, a role in the stability of the joint also. The capsular aponeurosis, the bone status, if there's any crack or fracture or any degenerative uh, processes on the surfaces of these uh, articular uh, surfaces of these uh, bones inside the joint also play a role in the joint stability. Also, of course, the body weight uh, plays a role on the uh, stability. Here in this <coughs> figure, we see the joint. We have the medial collateral joint and the lateral collateral joint. The medial called tibial, the lateral is fibula. And we have the patellar ligament below the patella going to the tibia. Also, we have anterior cruciate ligaments and the posterior cruciate ligaments. All these extra and intra-articular ligaments, they are very important in getting stability of this joint. The meniscus. The meniscus uh, are fibrocartaginous discs. They are short absorbers and they are also important for the lubrication of the surfaces. And they have a sensory uh, proprioceptive uh, sensory receptors to uh, send proprioceptive uh, impulses uh, if there's any uh, pain. The medial one is, all, is always is uh, semicircular. The lateral one is circular. The inner portion are always a vascular, while the vascularity is outer edge of this meniscus. Here we have a comparison between the medial and lateral meniscus. The medial meniscus is, as I said, is uh, semicircular or semilunar. There's no complete circle, while the lateral meniscus is, uh, is, uh, is uh, almost complete circle. It the, the medial one has a medial anterior horn, wide posterior horn, and it, it is more susceptible for injury. 
while the lateral one, the susceptibility for injury is less than the medial side. In this diagram, we can see, this figure, we can see uh, the uh, varieties of the menstrual tear. We have the vertical one, or it may be comes with bucket handle shape, the tear, or it may come in transverse tear or degenerative process. It may be uh, like a degeneration. We have the articular cartilage also. They are specialized connective tissue, their thickness uh, around two to four millimeter, the femoral and tibial condyles also play a role in the lubrication and smoothness of the uh, movement of the joints, of the bones, uh, provide low friction. Bursae. We have uh, many bursae in this complex joint. Uh, the important one are the prepatellar bursae located above the femur, just uh, uh, proximal to the, TV, uh, to the patella. And we have uh, pre suprapatellar bursa, infrapatellar bursa, and pes and sternus bursa, medially. The muscle components are very important and they, they, are, uh, play, they play a very important role in the controlling of the stability of this complex joint. Anterior compartment of the femur, we have the rectus femoris, vastus media, intermedius, which is uh, just below the rectus femoris, and we have the vastus medialis and the vastus lateralis. Those are the important uh, muscles anteriorly affecting the stability of the knee joint. Posteriorly, we have laterally, we have the biceps femoris, and medially, we have three muscles from lateral to medial, we have the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and the gracilis muscles. Of course, it has a blood supply, complex uh, mesh of blood supplies coming to supply this complex joint. Four, we have uh, four genicular branches from the popliteal artery, and we have descending branch from the femoral artery, and another descending branch from the lateral femoral circumflex artery. I would like to mention about uh, an important point about the uh, four genitular branches of the, these vessels are very important in our diagnosis. And uh, later on, I will come to the, discuss it. When we do a uh, ultrasound scan, they play a very important uh, landmarks for our uh, job. Nerve supply, they are called genitular, means pertaining to the knee. We have mainly superior and inferior medial genitalar nerves and the medial genitalar nerves. Those are sensory branches coming from the tibial nerve. And we have the superior lateral and inferior lateral coming from the common peroneal nerve. These small sensory nerves are named for the arteries that they accompany as they traverse the knee joint. They are always accompanied beside the, those arteries growing. Knee pain. The pain is the most uh, complaint thing that brings the patient to the clinic. Always, uh, most of them come with pain. It may be due to a pathology in the knee or may be referred from other areas. So the, it may be uh, a problem inside the knee or a problem other sites, but referring to the area of the pain of the knee. So in detailed history with examination, will help to differentiate. We can uh, have uh, some idea uh, to differentiate from which this pain is coming, whether it is solely of the knee joint or from other areas. The referred pain, it could be from the uh, facet joints or from lumbar disc or from L3, L4, nerve root pain or hip pathologies, myofascial pain, etc. All these could be the causes of the refer referred pain to the knee area. On examination, we have to start with inspection. We inspect the gait. Uh, we see the gait alignment. If there's any atrophy of the muscles, which I mentioned, or swelling over the knee area in bursa, uh, any deformity in the bones, all this we should look at it. By palpation, we uh, look for tibial tuberosity of patella, bursae, uh, 
joint lines. Uh, and palpation of bursi is very important to see if there's any tenderness or swallowing or effusion in the bursi uh, joint lines. Popliteal fossa, fossa posteriorly is also important to uh, look for it and palpate it to see whether if there's any pathology there. Intra and extra articular swelling also should be palpated. Range of movement, you know, uh, the knee joint has a range of movement from zero to 140. Any change in this range of movement should be noticed. The passive movement feel the clepitus or any hyperextension if there's below 10 degree and look for hip joint uh, examination also. We have specific maneuvers to do the examination for this knee joint. We have valgus and varus stress test. Uh, we have anterior and posterior drawer test, Lachman test, uh, tibial sac test, a please compression test, and we have McMurray test. All these tests help us to differentiate whether the pain is from the meniscus or the ligament or from outside or the bursae. Here in these pictures, we see the on the left side, the valgus stress test, and on the right, the varus stress test. How we do it? This is a, a video about the Lachman test. The Lachman test is uh, specific for the anterior cruciate ligament. We do, uh, we start with, let me play it. We start with flexion of 30 degree. After that, we make external rotation of the tibia and start to t pull the tibia anteriorly to check if there is any uh, excessive movement or uh, pain. If the test is positive, means that there's a problem with the anterior cruciate ligament. But before that, we should exclude any uh, damage or injury to the posterior cruciate ligament, because if there is any problem with the posterior cruciate ligament, there it will give us a positive test in, with the Lachman uh, test. McMurray test, another test to examine examination of the knee joint. We take the knee joint to full flexion. Of course, the patient in supine position, we make the knee joint in full flexion. After that, we made the tibia medially rotated, medial rotation for the and, uh, sorry, internal rotation for the tibia. After that, we check the knee joint in various angles, degrees of flexion. You see, I'm still internal, the tibia is still internal rotated and in various degrees of flexion of the knee joint, we are checking what? We are checking the lateral meniscus here. After that, we go to do external rotation of the tibia again in various angles of the knee flexion to check of the medial meniscus. If we feel any clicking or locking or pain during this test, means that uh, meniscal injury and the test considered positive. Apple's compression test is another important test, but this test will be done in a prone position. You see the patient here is in a prone position, flex the knee joint 90 degree, and the examiner should put his leg over the thigh of the patient and make a distraction. You see, I'm distracting the leg after that, we made external rotation and internal rotation. If we feel any excessive movement, the test here will be considered positive. 
After that, in the same 30 degree of knee flexion, we do compression. You see, but with compression, external rotation of the tibia, after that, internal rotation of the tibia. Any limitation of movement, the test will be positive. Here in Apley's test, any, if in case of rotation with distraction, if there is any excessive movement with pain, means that ligamentous problem. While with rotation and compression and, and comes with a limitation of movement and pain, means that menstrual injury. So this is to differentiate between menstrual injury and ligamentous injury. By this, we completed the examinations. After we uh, did proper examination, we go to visualize the problem, how to get image for the problem. Traditionally, it was done by taking an X-ray image or taking the MRI. Of course, the X-ray image has a risk of radiation, while uh, MRI has uh, always the problem with the patients, not every patient except to get inside the tube of the MRI, other than it is costly for the patient. So now the evolving scan uh, and to visualize the problem is the ultrasound, because it is bedside test and we can do it in the clinic. It's not costly for the patient with no risk of radiation or, or fear of the, uh, of the tube of the MRI. But the ultrasound machine should be a proper uh, system and it, has, it should have a proper uh, softwares for the scan for the knee joint because each ultrasound machine has its own job. For example, ultrasound machine for, ultra, uh, for grinding and obstructed cannot be used for the knee joint or musculoskeletal unless it has a proper software, specific software for the musculoskeletal. So in our practice in pain management, we should seek for the ultrasound machines that has uh, software for musculoskeletal and the rheumatology. And the probe, regarding the probe, it should have the linear probe and with higher frequencies. This will help us in our uh, scan for the knee joint specifically. Here, in uh, comparison between a uh, few probes, we have uh, the linear probe and the curved probe. And we have another many, many, many shapes and types of the uh, props, but simply I would like to uh, clarify these uh, properties of the linear and the curved. For the linear, we choose it in knee uh, specifically for due to uh, has uh, high frequency and it can, can uh, penetrate superficial tissues only. So it will give me a very good image for the superficial structures, while the curved probe has a low frequency with deep penetration. So it, is, it will be good for the uh, deeper structures like abdominal or uh, in lumbosacral scan, it will be good for th that practice. But in our practice for knee joint, it is the linear probe will be better with higher frequency for our job. Now comes in ultrasound, it, we come to the orientation. We have uh, how to put your probe, how you can uh, get the best image each part of this knee joint has a specific approach to get the best image to visualize your pathology. So how we have to learn how to visualize. This is, we, we call it orientation, how you put your probe and where you put it, in which angle, in which depth, in which uh, uh, gain, all these parameters, we should control it to get the best image to visualize our problem. In suprapatellar area, we have two image we should seek for it one in the longitudinal view and the other in the and the other one is the uh, transverse view in this slide you as you see the uh, probe longitudinally over the suprapatellar area just proximal to the patella and the, on the right side the foot picture of the ultrasound showing the uh, you see the shadow black shadow over the right side of the picture this is the shadow of the patella below below a bone there is a black uh, hypoechoic area and above you see the sheet of the uh, tendon of the rectus femoris muscle below you see that this black uh, space it is the suprapatellar bursa so this is the suprapatellar bursa uh, view in longitudinal 
In transverse view, we see what? You see this curved. The curved uh, shadow white, it is uh, the femur. Above the femur, we have the this white uh, black slit. You see hypoetrogenic black slit. This is the suprapatellar bursa in transverse view, above which we have the uh, tendon of the rectus femoris muscle. Now we come to the strand of the patella bone. Always a bone has eco hypoechoic area below, nothing to be seen below the bone. So this white curve uh, is the patella, and below is the uh, hypoechoic, uh, nothing to see. Above the patella, a uh, little inferiorly, we have the patellar tendon going down to the tibia. An infrapatellar scan, just below the, the patella, you see on the image of the ultrasound, on the left side, there is the uh, shadow of the patella bone, and the uh, inferiorly growing, uh, you see the patellar tendon, and below the fat pad area. Pathologies, which could be seen uh, until in the anterior knee are the quadriceps tear. There may be a tear in the quadriceps uh, tendon tear or patellar tendon tear could be happen. A joint infusion, specifically suprapatellar bursitis or prepatellar bursitis uh, or maybe patellar fracture, patellar fracture. You can see the crack on the ultrasound of the patella. Jumper's knee, which is patellar tendonitis or the features of osteoarthritis could be visualized on the anterior knee by ultrasound. Here, we can see the normal patellar tendon over in the left side picture. This is the normal one, while the right one, this is the uh, tendonitis. You see how it looks like. So we can get the uh, idea that the patient's pain due to this uh, jumper's knee by ultrasound only. Prepatellar bursitis, the bursa over the patella will be uh, infused and uh, will be swollen. And it looks like hypoechoic shadow black, as you see it over the patella on the left side picture. While the right side, sorry, on the right side picture. The left side picture is the normal patella with uh, normal bursa. Here we can see the no, as we uh, in the left side picture the normal uh, bursa suprapatellar bursa while on the right side picture there is a huge effusion of the suprapatella with the uh, whitish small circular crystals shadowing inside the bursa. This is in longitudinal view. Now we come to the medial side of the knee. What we seek for the medial collateral ligament, the medial meniscus, and the pes and cernus, which is insertion of the conjoint tendons of the sartorius, gracilis, and semitendinosus. Here we see the orientation of the knee, uh, of the ultrasound on the medial side of the knee, would be like that. The middle picture is a normal visualization of the medial collateral ligament, you see. It is, uh, uh, this is the normal one. In the left side, in the right side picture, you can see if there is any uh, tear, it should be uh, any tear or any bursa or any inflammation could be seen by visualized by the ultrasound in the inside within the medial collateral ligament. Also, we look, seek for the meniscus, the same position, same orientation of the ultrasound, and the same picture will be visualized. On the, left, on the right side, you see this yellow arrow showing the uh, tear in the meniscus uh, on the medial side. This is how it look, looks like. Pierce and Cerny, we go by the uh, ultrasound little bit down, medially, to visualize the pierce and Cerny, which is the insertion of the conjoint muscles, as I mentioned. On the lower, 
right side picture, you can see the uh, hypoechoic bursa inflamed and a little bit widened. This, is, this means that there's an inflammation on the, in, in this area and maybe the, uh, maybe the cause of the pain on the medial side of the joint. On the lateral side of the knee, we look for the collateral ligament and the lateral meniscus. The lateral collateral ligament visualization should the probe put in this uh, view, the knee flexed in 30 degree and the probe longitudinally put in. This is the right picture showing the normal lateral collateral ligament view. Of course, the same position for the meniscus also showing us below the lateral collateral ligament, we go lower, we see the uh, meniscus, which is healthy in this view. Posteriorly, we have to look for the popliteal fossa, we have neurovascular components, we have bursa, we have hamstring muscles. All these should be looked for. Any one of these could be uh, uh, have a problem that may cause in the pain, especially posteriorly on the knee. The major problem of knee pain is the, uh, the major cause of the knee pain is uh, osteoarthritis, it is, which is degenerative disease with progressive destruction of the articular cartilage, subarticular cyst formation and cyclosis, remodeling of bone ends, osteophyte formations with synovial irritation and capsular fibrosis. All these findings could be found, or a few of them could be found according to the degree and the severity of the osteoarthritis changes inside the knee joint. We have gradient, Caledrin Lawrence gradient for the osteoarthritis changes from grade one to four, the grade one, which is the uh, less problem, the grade four, which is the worst one. You see in grade one, there is possible osteophyte lipid. In grade two, there is a definite osteophyte. In grade four, there's multiple moderate osteophyte with definite joint space narrowing. While grade four, there's a large osteophyte, marked joint space narrowing, severe cirrhosis, and definite bony end deformities, which is very bad condition. This was the Caledrin Lawrence gradient, which we depend on it uh, upon our uh, management lines of uh, therapy. As I said, the ultrasound machine has many uh, kinds of probes. We get benefit only from the linear probe, which, is, which has a higher frequency in our practice regarding the knee joint. While for other parts of the area, of the body, we can choose accordingly. The ultrasound features for the knee joint in osteoarthritis changes, there's a cortical discontinuation, suprapatellar bursitis can be seen. There, uh, you can see it by ultrasound, there's an inflammation, widening, increased space in the, uh, increase in hypoechogenicity in the suprapatellar area or meniscal degenerative changes. There may be tear or uh, inflammation inside it. Uh, articular cartilage thickening happens. Osteophyte formation also could be seen by ultrasound. How we get approach to the patient with OA? Of course, we started with clinical examination and we start with pain score, vas score, uh, primarily. After that, we got we get a warm up score from the patient, and after that, ultrasound scan and the other scans, like MRI if we need it. The management of the osteoarthritis depends on the severity, as I said. For grade one and two, we uh, go with drug treatment and regenerative therapy. With grade three and grade four, we go with uh, genital nerve ablation by radio frequency or knee arthroplitis, which is surgery. But most of the patients, if they are geriatric and cannot tolerate uh, the operation or cannot uh, afford the money for the surgery, they prefer genital nerve ablation to get rid of the pain of this uh, knee joint. In regenerative therapy, platelet-rich plasma, PRP, 
therapy used injections of uh, of patients on platelets in two sessions or may or maybe three sessions according to the protocols of each center in one uh, six weeks and in between each session after that we should get improvement with the patient we have here randomized control trial about the effect of injecting intraarticular platelet rich plasma or prolotherapy on pain score and function. We see below in conclusion, there is a significant decrease in the overall Walmart score and improvement in the uh, lifestyle shortly after the first injection. Of course, after successive second and third injections, there will be more better improvements. This is how we do the PRP. We take a blood sample from the patient put it inside the tube, and with centrifuge, we can get the uh, our uh, target of PRP. After that, with ultrasound guide, we inject it inside the uh, required area. Here, the needle path, you see the, in the ultrasound picture here on the lower top, the yellow arrow showing the needle path. Our needle should get inside this bursa, after that, we start with injection. Imagine if there is no ultrasound, we cannot get this area uh, correctly. Genital nerve ablations by radio frequency. We have genital nerves, as I mentioned, on the, in the anatomy on the nerve supply, can be performed under fluoroscope or ultrasound guidance. Uh, of course, I prefer the uh, ultrasound guided one because I will uh, put my, the tip of my needle correctly over the need of the, the nerve or beside the nerve. Whether in all, in, with the fluoroscope, I cannot guess where it's the nerve exactly. It may be far away or maybe so close. I cannot, or maybe inside the nerve. So the nerves are targeted adjacent to the periosteum on the medial aspect of the tibia. They are always adjacent to the uh, periosteum and at both medial and lateral aspects of the femur at the junction of the shaft and the epicondyle. Here, the orientation again for the uh, ultrasound probe for the supramedial uh, genicular nerve ablation. We put the probe in this position and the picture will show us uh, like this. You see the uh, this is blue, uh, blue spot, which is the uh, genicular artery there, just above the periosteum. So we get it as a target. <clears throat> of course, this picture will appear with the color Doppler. Uh, after we get the picture of the ultrasound, we choose the option of the color Doppler to visualize the genicular artery because genicular nerve by itself is very small. Sensory nerve cannot be visualized alone. Uh, not always will be visible. So we seek for the genicular uh, artery for easy, but you see in this picture, there's another small artery, which is a red spot, but that one we cannot consider it because it is away from the periosteum. We take this one, the blue, which is uh, so close to the periosteum. And superior lateral approach for the genicular, superior lateral genicular nerve, we put the ultrasound probe like this and we uh, visualize of course, the color Doppler, we see very clearly here the uh, genicular artery. So we bring our needle tip just beside it to get uh, a proper position for the genicular nerve ablation. <clears throat> An inferomedial approach, the orientation of the ultrasound will be like this. And the picture of the ultrasound, uh, we of course go to the color Doppler option. Again, we to visualize where's the artery and put our needle just beside it. Here the picture for uh, fluoroscopic guide uh, genital nerve ablations. You see the three needles are put in, in proper position, but uh, we cannot guess if, there's, if this position is only anatomically correct, but we cannot uh, know whether it is one millimeter beside or 10 millimeters away from the nerve here. So I prefer and advise to do it by ultrasound guide every time. Other interventions which can be, which 
uh, it will be done in, in the knee joint, is the intra-articular injections by ultrasound guide, fluid aspiration if there is better cyst, for example, meniscus injury, bursa injections, all these can be uh, done in the knee joint. Why I prefer ultrasound guide in knee interventions? Because for the accuracy, as I mentioned, because I can see the nerve uh, just beside the genitular artery, I can see correct position of the artery where it is, and can I put the tip of my needle over there with no any doubt. And it is less post-procedure pain. Why? Because if you don't have uh, an ultrasound and you want to do a burst injection or aspiration, you will try and to get until you uh, many times you do the injections and you uh, end with the painful uh, procedure for the patient. And it has a very high clinical outcome. If you look in Google Scholar about the ultrasound guided knee injections, you will see about 25,300 results published uh, uh, encouraging ultrasound guided knee injections. And if you go more specific for osteoarthritic knee sonographic guidance, you will get 17,000 results about uh, this uh, procedure. Most of them are randomized controlled trial, like those above on the screen. In PubMed, if you search about uh, from 2000 to 2010 about ultrasound guided knee interventions, you will get 209 results published. While if you come uh, to search up from 2011 to 2020 for ultrasound guided knee interventions, you will get 764 results. It means that this evolving procedure and ultrasound is a, uh, including many falls in the last 10 years. <clears throat> of course, in this picture, my teacher, Professor Gautam Das, uh, he's my mentor. Uh, to get the best results, the best management for the knee joint problems, you have to get the best pro, uh, uh, training in the ultrasound, because if you, if you are going to depend on ultrasound results, you have to be confident with your picture. You have to be confident with your uh, experience in ultrasound to visualize the best image to get the best result. If your image is not good, if your experience is not good, you cannot depend on the result to get management. So the best reason I uh, advise the best uh, training centers are the uh, Dradia Pain Hospital in India and the IPSC in India also center, European Diploma of Pain Management, of course the NYSURA, New York uh, School for Regional Anesthesia, and there's many, many other centers can get the best training there. Thank you. Thank you so much for, thank you so much for this excellent presentation, Dr. Otman. Thank, thank you, you again. And uh, we have lots of, we have lots of questions uh, about your presentation. And uh, I need to pick up some one because of, there's a real, real lots of question. Okay, one of, one of them, um, Dr. Wigwar asked to, in radio frequency of genicular nerve ablation, uh, he, he asked to ask, we, we, we see in the ultrasonography, the genicular artery, but we did not get the sensory stimulation. What are we gonna do? Yes, sometimes happen. We should change the position of our needle. This, uh, you know, the nerve could become on the medial side of this artery or the lateral side of this artery. We should sit for it, whether if it is below it or above it, medially or laterally in our picture. And this way we can get uh, our uh, nerve. 
Yeah, exactly. We, we, we need to change our needle position. And another question, Doctor, from Doctor Novian, uh, he asked to you: Do you have any experience about the uh, ozone therapy, medical ozone, ozone therapy? Ozone therapy, I don't practice it in, uh, in in our center. We don't practice it. Okay. I, don't have uh, I have some experience with ozone therapy, especially in the genicular, uh, especially osteoarthritis of the knee. Uh, we have some good results, um, especially the 20 gamma and 20 milliliter of intraarticulary. Uh, we have a good results. But uh, Ozone therapy is not legally all, all, all the countries. An example, we are using ozone therapy legally and the government covered this, uh, but not all, all the country. The, uh, there's a lot of question and I, I wanna pick up some one. Okay, Dr. Alien asked you, what nerves make, what nerves makes knee pain mainly affected? What treatment is the most effective? Uh, I think uh, he would like to ask to us, which nerve do you prefer, which nerve do you prefer in genicular uh, nerve ablation? Yes, uh, actually uh, we take the supra, uh, supramedial and the inframedial and the uh, supralateral. These are three nerves okay. we take it. It's kind okay. of three nerves. more than 70% of this pain. Okay. Three nerves, that's enough. Yes. Sometimes sometimes we go to the intermediate one below the uh, tendon of the uh, rectus femoris. Okay, thank you. Um, Dr. Marco asks, is the knee arthroplasty recommended for people over 70 years old? Knee arthroplasty actually is recommended, uh, has recommendations not regarding the age, regarding the condition of the knee joint, the deformity, how much uh, the angle of the deformity of the knee joint, can the patient move uh, freely or not? range of movement of the knee joint, the grade of pain, the willing of the patient to how to want to live. Some patients come with deformity and uh, 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 without regard to age, uh, with deformity and not willing to do the surgery because of the medical problems or not, uh, he cannot cover the cost of the surgery. But uh, again, the indications for arthroplasty uh, has no uh, limit with the age, even for uh, 80, 85, pers 80, 85 years old patients can do the arthroplasty if their medical conditions allow. Yeah, okay. Uh, Dr. Carman asks, uh, does knee joint effusion or knee joint synovitis need a surgery? Sorry, again. Uh, Dr. Carman asked, does the knee joint effusion or knee joint synovitis is needed the surgery? Uh, rarely. Knee joint effusion uh, always can be managed medically. Uh, sometimes we need to get effusion. Of course, the underlying condition, what is the underlying uh, cause? There's any inflammation, you need uh, drug treatment, uh, aspiration, good follow up, and uh, physiotherapy. Uh, most of them uh, got better. Okay. Uh, other question When you are doing a knee joint puncture treatment, come on, linear prop or hockey prop? Which is the best choice during the puncture? Sorry, puncture where? Uh, w w when you perform, uh, I think uh, he or she asked to you, when you perform the joint puncture, interventional joint procedure, 
uh, which transducer would you like to prefer? L linear transducer or hockey uh, prop, hockey transducer? W which is the best uh, choice? I prefer uh, the linear one, as I mentioned, it has uh, higher perfusion, uh, high uh, frequency, sorry. It has high frequency and it covers wide areas over the joint, so I can see the all, almost all the anatomy. While the hockey, uh, cannot visualize for me much area of the uh, joint. Uh, Dr. Dr. Talib asked uh, another question. What do you think about stem cell or bone marrow or fat uh, injection for osteoarthritis treatment? Uh, I think he, he would like to ask stem cell therapy, bone marrow or fat uh, tissue. In osteoarthritis, yes. in osteoarthritis, as I mentioned, the uh, the lines of treatment are different uh, according to the degree of the osteoarthritis. In grade one and two, is very promising the uh, uh, fat therapy, uh, and it's more superior than the uh, PRP, especially the lipogen one. Uh, the stem cell we have we still have no practice, and it's, uh, it's not. Uh, in uh, it's not practicing yet in Iraq, uh, the stem cell. But uh, the stem cell, as I read in the literatures, all intelligent about the stem cells nowadays. Okay. Dr. Wigger asks, uh, are you prefer PRP therapy uh, in Calgren Laren grade four osteoarthritis? No. 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 It's, it's uh, in my opinion, it's too late. Yes. Uh, maximally, maximally, actually, we try, we give a try in, in grade three uh, A. But the best results, you can get it with grade one and two. Okay. Of course, grade four is very late. Uh, they have a deformity deformities and the surfaces of the condyles and the uh, walking is uh, not good for the patients. So we're not let benefit because the bone touching bone, no meniscus is there. Okay, we have now lots of time and uh, I would like to ask one question, one more question. Dr. Massar asked you, uh, Dr. Otman, is there any pain in the middle joint? Is there any pain in, in the middle joint? joint due to nerve and trap what we gonna see in ultrasonography so if there is a pain in the middle joint middle joint due, due to nerve entrapment there is a nerve entrapment uh, so there is a middle middle side of the joint pain what, what we can see uh, at the ultrasonographic image we can see anything about the uh, nerve entrapment? Dr. Massar asked. Which nerve entrapment? He, uh... Yeah, we, we're gonna ask to which nerve entrapment, but uh, he didn't uh, write this. Um, the knee joint both anteriorly, medially, and laterally, we don't have any nerves going there to get entrapped there. But posteriorly, we have the neurovascular compartment uh, by ultrasound, and they are away from the, uh, the joint capsule. There may be yes. better sometimes pressing on this uh, nerve, uh, neurovascular bonding sometimes, and this we can see by the ultrasound. We see the better cyst, so we, got, so we got, can guess this is compressing over the neurovascular bundle. Yeah. yeah. It is it could be compressed to the nerve, yeah. Uh, I think the time is the end now. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to join this webinar uh, as a moderator. And I would like to thank you again to your perfect presentation, Dr. Otman. Thank you so much. Thank you, too. Thank you for Westonic uh, Company for this opportunity again, and thank you for the attendance. Uh, hope to see you again with another subject, and uh, inshallah. Okay, uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation, Dr. Othman, and uh, thanks for your kind uh, 
uh, assistants, Dr. Toga. It's time to yes, start right now. And You're me, welcome. Also, we need to thank all the audiences for staying with us all the time. So, uh, for more information about the Wisonic new webinars or the replay of the past webinars, please just follow Wisonic official account at uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, or YouTube. See you next time. Okay. Have bye -bye. a good day. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.